In this episode of Gaffering Gear, we're gonna go over tips and formulas to help you figure out how many lights you can run off a domestic power circuit. All right, so let's start off with a formula. So the formula is amps times your volts equals your watts. Now this is a fantastic formula for figuring out what the potential amount of power you can pull off a circuit is or off a outlet is. So the first thing we need to know is our amps. So up here I have three values written, 10 amps, 16 amps, and 20 amps. They are the three most common values you're gonna come across here in Australia, that's where I live. Now, if you might have different values in other parts of the world, that's okay, just use those values instead. But they're the three most common ones here in Australia. So 10 amps is the rating of a domestic power outlet. It is also the rating of a domestic power board like this. So if you go over 10 amps, the circuit breaker here will trip. 16 amps and 20 amps are the two most common ratings for circuit breakers that those domestic outlets are attached to. Now the next thing we need to know for our calculation is what our voltage is. Now there are two common voltages around the world, 120 volt or 230 volt. Now there are a few countries that are 240 volt as well. Now just something to note, Australia, which is where I live, used to be 240 volts, now we're 230 volts. All right, so let's put some values in and see how the formula goes. All right, so let's work out what we can run off our domestic 10 amp power board. All right, so we put down 10 amps. We times that by our voltage, which is 230 volts here in Australia. And that tells me how many watts I can run off this power board, which is 2,300 watt. All right, so let's put a different value in. Let's go 20 amps because that's what the circuits are in my house here. So 20 amps times the voltage that we have here in Australia, which is 230 volts. That equals 4,600 watt. Now I can run 4,600 watts in total off a 20 amp circuit, but that doesn't mean I can run a 4,000 watt light. I'm limited to the output of my power outlets. Now this figure is theoretically the most we can run off the circuit, but in reality, don't push your luck. There's always the unknown. There could be another room in the house that's on the same circuit, and they might have things plugged in that you don't know about. The other thing too is your voltage isn't constant. It might go up and down. So if it goes down, your amperage will go up, and if you're close to your limit, you'll trip the breakers. So always give yourself a bit of leeway. All right, so we've worked out that we can run 4,600 watts off a 20 amp circuit at 230 volts. Now here's the problem for me. I'm a gaffer, I'm not a producer, so I'm not good at counting high numbers. All right, 4,600 watts is far too many numbers for me to keep track of. I would rather just be counting to 20 because I can do that on my fingers and toes. So I'm gonna give you a new formula now for working out how many amps you're putting onto your circuit. Now this formula here is watts divided by volts equals amps. So you can use this formula to help you figure out how many amps your light is pulling. Okay, so we've got a 20 amp circuit that we're running off, for example. How many of those 20 amps is this light using? Now I'm deliberately using the 600D here as an example because this is a trap that people could fall into. Now this is a 600 watt light. Now what I mean by that is the light, this part here, is 600 watts, the LED light emitter. The actual light's power draw is more than 600 watt. So how you find out this information is look at the, on the light somewhere or on the controller or the ballast somewhere, you'll find a little plate of information, we call that a compliancy plate, and on that should be written the maximum power draw of the light. So in this case, it's 720 watt. All right, so we wanna put 720 watts into our formula, not 600 watts. All right, so let's do that. So 720 watts, and we divide that by our voltage, which for me is 230, and that equals my amps, which I've uh, already calculated here on my phone. So that's 3.13 amps. 
Now this 0.13, I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna get rid of it. But I don't round down, I round up. It's always a good idea to round up. So I might round that to say 3.5 amps, for example. Okay, so rounding things up gives me a little bit of leeway to allow for line loss over power cables, things like that. All right, so I've got 3.5 amps, that's rounded up, is my power draw of this, of this unit. If I've got a 20 amp circuit, I know that I've got 16 and a half amps left over. All right, so let's quickly talk about HMIs. And here's the problem. Let's say you've got an M18, that's 1,800 watts. That 1,800 watts refers to the lamp. It doesn't actually refer to how much power the light actually draws. How much power the light draws can depend on the brand of ballast. And there's a huge difference between manufacturers. So if you're renting an M18, for example, ask the lighting company you're renting it from what the power draw is. If they're a decent company, they should know. Otherwise, allow about 20% leeway. Now, so far we've done all of our calculations based on nominal voltage. And if you're working in inner suburbia, that's probably fine 95% of the time. But there is one thing that can really affect your voltage, and that is how close or how far away you are from a power transformer. Now, let's say we're working out in the country. Let's imagine this is somebody's big farm, and this is their house, and you've got hundreds of meters, maybe even a kilometer or a mile, of power cables going back to the power grid where the transformer is. Now, I've been in situations where this has happened. Now, here's a trap you can fall into. You can plug your meter into a power outlet and read the voltage, and it seems okay. It doesn't seem like there's any voltage drop. Here's the catch. The voltage will drop tremendously as soon as you put load on. So as soon as you start running lights, you're gonna get more resistance along these cables and your voltage can drop sharply. Now, here's the thing I'm doing. At the moment, I'm getting, what's that, 237, 237 volts, 238 volts off this power board, okay? Now, to prove this theory, I'm running this power board off 70 meters of power cable, and I'm getting the same voltage as if I run directly off a power outlet. It appears that I'm losing no voltage over that 70 meters, but like I said earlier, I don't have any load on. So what I'm gonna do is turn on a 2000 watt load that's plugged into this power board, and let's have a look at how much the meter drops. Okay, so 238 volts, and let's go. Now, if I'm working in a house that I think is a long way away from a transformer, I will take a voltage reading under load. That's the important bit, under load then I'll base all of my calculations on that under load voltage limit. And here's the important thing to remember. When your voltage goes down, your amperage goes up. Okay, so you can run less power off a circuit. But not only that, your amperage could exceed the ratings on your power cables. All right, so just something I want to point out here before we start breaking down the fuse box. Uh, this is a slightly older uh, Australian fuse box. So it has something that you might not come across in newer houses, and that is these large uh, things here. These are called safety switches. They're also called earth leakage circuit breakers or residual current devices. So what these things do is they monitor the power that's going out and they monitor the power that's coming back. And if the two don't closely match, then this will trip out. So these have no bearing on how much load you can put on your circuits, but they are an additional safety measure. So if these are tripping, it's not because you're pulling too many amps, it's because you have something uh, in the house that is an electrical hazard. Now, you can see here there's color coding, so this red safety switch is protecting these two circuits, this green safety switch is protecting these three circuits. In modern, more modern fuse boxes, this technology has been reduced to the size where it's actually built into your circuit breakers now. Now, if you open up the fuse box and it is marked up like this, you have hit the jackpot because this tells you what your power circuits are. So what we're looking for is circuits marked power. Now, if you can't find uh, the word power, another thing to look for is GPO. GPO means general purpose outlet, which is a power outlet. So anything marked GPO or power are the circuits that your power outlets are on. So we've got three circuits here 
and they're 20 amps. So I know they're 20 amps because it's got 20 written on the breaker and also the breakers are yellow. So yellow in Australia is 20 amps, blue is 16. The amount of power you can run is limited to how many circuits you've got with power or the main switch. So the main switch here or the main breaker has all of the other breakers running through it. So the job of this switch is to make sure the total load that the house is pulling does not exceed what the power cable coming in off the street can handle. So your total amount of power that we can pull is either the total of your power circuits or the, uh, the amount that the main breaker switch can handle, whichever is the lesser of the two. Now your main breakers will be typically 63 amps or 80 amps like this one. Now in a big house, that might be a three phase breaker, in which case you get your amperage for that breaker and times it by three. But don't forget that mains breaker is taking everything in the house that uses power. All right, so what if my uh, circuits are not marked up and I really do need to have some idea of how much power we can run off the house? Well, what I start doing is having a look at the circuit breaker values and eliminating the circuits that have nothing to do with us. Okay, so eight or 10 amps, all right? So those ones are the lights that are in the house, as in the lights that are in the ceiling, okay? So I can ignore those. The next ones I'll ignore are 32, okay? 32 uh, amp circuits. That's usually things like an air conditioner or maybe a hot water system or a really, really big electric oven. So my GPOs, my power outlets, are not gonna be on the 32 amp breakers so I can ignore those. So what I'm looking for is 16 or 20 amp breakers. But 16 or 20 amp breakers aren't just the power outlets, there are other things that can use those. So what I do is I have a look around the house. So the first place I start is the kitchen. If there's an oven, that's a 20 amp circuit breaker. Now sometimes you might get lucky and open up a cupboard next to the oven and discover that it's plugged into a 20 amp power outlet. Now also in the kitchen is a dishwasher. So that's gonna be on a 20 amp circuit as well. So of the four 20 amp circuits here, that could possibly be dedicated power circuits. One of them is an oven and one of them is my dishwasher. That leaves me with only two circuits that can possibly be dedicated power circuits. Now something I better point out, this circuit is actually my dishwasher but it's marked down as being power. Now the reason for that is because the dishwasher plugs into a power outlet under the sink. Now the next thing I better point out is most fuse boxes won't have a power outlet in them. The reason I've done this is because I don't have enough circuits in my house to test my lights. Now most houses that I work in will have four to six power circuits, not like this place that only has two. And on most jobs I'm doing, I get enough time to have a look in the fuse box and have a walk around the house and figure out roughly how many power circuits I've got to play with. But here's the thing, I pretty much never get enough time to figure out which circuit is connected to which power outlets in the house. That virtually never happens. So here's my game plan in that situation. My big lights like uh, M18 HMIs, I make sure I don't run two of those off the same room. I will try to separate the power runs or separate the power loads. So my go-tos are the laundry, and if the, a house is two floors, going on to the next level. So the laundry is usually always on a separate power circuit to the rest of the house, and upstairs is usually on a separate circuit to downstairs. Failing that, I just try to get the power connections as far away as I can get from each other. Now usually the kitchen's on a separate circuit, but that's the last place I plug a big light into because you're competing with the fridge for power, and somebody's bound to turn the kettle on. Now the next thing is I'd be mindful of other departments that are using power. So for example, I won't plug a M18 HMI into a power outlet in the same room as somebody who's running a hairdryer, for example. Okay, so I'd be mindful of other departments. Now, if I do trip a circuit breaker, the last thing I do is come to the fuse box and turn it back on. That's the last thing I do. The first thing I do is take note of all the lights that have turned off and I do a calculation in my head of how many amps that is. And then I figure out what power I need to remove from that, or what lights I need to remove from that to get that back down to the limit of the circuit breaker. Now here's the thing, the, uh, that circuit that's tripped, all the outlets don't work. All the other circuits in the house are still working. So it's very easy at that point to figure out where the other circuits are. So whatever lights I take off the circuit that's tripped, I plug them into a power outlet that's working and I know they're on a different circuit. After I've done that, I come to the fuse box and turn the power back on.
Now, if you're shooting in somebody's house for an extended amount of time, particularly if you've got a big crew, it really is a good idea to figure out which circuit is connected to which rooms in the house. That way you don't accidentally go around tripping each other's circuits. Now, this is something that's relatively easy to do if you've got two people and a radio or even just some mobile phones. So one person just plugs into the power outlets around the house and the other person just trips the breaker. Okay, you'll very quickly be able to figure out what circuits are connected to which breaker. Now, if you're doing a uh, power recce by yourself, so you're by yourself, you don't have anybody with you and you're trying to figure out which circuits are connected to what, what I do is I use a portable radio. So I'll have a radio plugged into a power outlet, cranking full blast. I know I found the circuit it's on when the music turns off.